When you're going down a hill on a skateboard at high speed, you get such a buzz. When I was 19 years old, I took off. Um, to work in Europe for a couple of years and over there it was easier to get skateboards so I had a whole collection and on time off I would be bombing hills and things like that. I came back to Dublin when I was 21 and decided I didn't want to work for the man anymore, I wanted to do my own thing and this skateboarding was kind of a passion I thought what a great thing to do, open a skateboard shop. Nobody has one here, nobody's thought of it, in fact nobody skateboards so it's going to be a bit tough. But it started from there. That was back around 1978. I got into skating from playing the Tony Hawk's video games. I didn't start skating until I was about 13. I only finished my first year in secondary school. And my brother came home on a board and then he said, do you want to? Someone did a trick on my board and once I seen them do one, I was like, that's amazing. Like they did it on the worst board possible. Like <laughs> it was like anybody can do this, you know what I mean? Like and then I was hooked on it straight from then like that. People live in their world of fear, they're afraid of like, what if I do fall? You have to learn how to fall and how to get back up, try again. As soon as you land something that you've never done, you're hooked. My mum used to work in Temple Street Hospital. That's where Clive from Skate City had, he had a shop just beside the hospital. So I used to go and watch the videos and watch the guys in the back on the mini ramps. But there was literally nothing to skate back then. Unless some nice guy like Clive decided to open a mini ramp in the back of his shop. For years and years, uh, you know, there was a few of us dedicated skateboarders. And if we wanted to skate a park, the nearest one was probably London. We were told time and time again, it's a fad, um, skateboarding will be gone in a year, and we're not going to invest money. And they kept this up for at least 20 years. And eventually they caved in and decided they would try a park. It's not as much like the way I used to be when we were younger because there was a lot more indoor skate parks and the likes when we were like younger, like growing up and everything like that. But if we get eight months around here, like, and if you don't have an indoor skate park, no one's progressing over the summer, over the winter. You still come across this kind of negative, this negativity towards skaters, doesn't matter what age you are. If you don't know enough about a particular culture, and the people that populate that culture, you don't know what they're really about, you don't take the time to get to know what they're really about, then there's never gonna be any progress. Uh, like I started like pushing my hands when I was like seven months. I like street skating. I like laser flips. Well, I don't know how to explain it, but it's such a sick and naughty trick and it's like the best trick I ever know. A few surveys done in England showed that if you put a skate park into an area, petty crime drops. Because instead of a bunch of teenagers hanging around the street corners, looking in car windows and things, now they're hanging out at the skate park. There needs to be growth, like there needs to be like hubs, like websites and like apps and things like that for people to get involved. We're trying to get skate maps, like going here, like we're after going around, I took like 600 photographs of like all the street spots in Dublin. We're going to put them on Google Maps and put them all linked onto an app, but as well as having like a forum and things like that as well. So people will be able to talk about, oh, what happened at the spot and everybody will be able to like, hopefully be able to use it like easily and friendly and obviously keep it free. The way I've seen it with like, trying to open the end of park is you need to have a warehouse. Like, that's your main concern. <laughs> but when you get the warehouse, you have to get insurance. 
and you can't have anybody into the warehouse until you have insurance. But unfortunately in Ireland, with the high cost of rent and rates and that, it's just not commercially viable. But the thing is, you'd be able to get the likes of government funding and things like that if you had your own facility. Like, so, because with the Olympics and everything coming up, I can't see them not giving it to us, you know what I mean? The future is bright. I, I would love to see some of them in an Olympic team. They need to come and see with themselves like the positive aspects of, of skate park culture, the good supportive community, the expression of creativity, the athletic kind of training that's involved in that. It, it's seen as like a subculture and it shouldn't be. Like, there's no one really out there like actually that is any way different to anybody else who does like rollerblading, graffiti, like skateboarding, music, guitar, like it's all the same, it's all under the same belt and art. Thank you for